Hi everyone, hope everybody are doing good. In the last video, we had discussed about the SAST, which is a um, static application security testing. And we had seen um, with the Bandit and we had discussed about how can we scan our Python application with the SAST. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the DAST, which is dynamic application security testing. So, you know, when it comes to DAST, like it is a type of security testing in software industry and um, it's used to find the vulnerabilities and security weakness in the web applications while it is running. So, you know, the main difference between the SAST and DAST is, um, you know, SAST use, uh, or I mean, SAST, SAST scanning do happen on um, industry or on a source code, which is on, um, which, which is on ideal, which means like you just go and scan your security uh, checks on everything on your source code, which is not executing, which, which is not running. So you just go and check all your source code, each line by line, are there any vulnerability security flaws are there. So that's what we had discussed in the last session, right, about this asked. So now, in, in this video, we are going to discuss about dynamic application security testing, which means, so you run your application, which means you run your source code behind that, you call it as application. And while the application is running, you would like to find the uh, vulnerabilities and security faults. So that's what the DAST do and DAST use to find the security vulnerabilities. So, you know, DAST tool is, you know, it's interact with your target web application. You know, you can uh, usually while you're running your application, you might have exposed your application with any IP address or uh, domain name service. So it's, I mean, our DAST is tool in our case, like we are going to use OWSP ZAP. So, you know, uh, we call it as a JD proxy. So we're going to use a JD proxy for scanning our live websites. So, so this DAST scan or DAST, uh, the you know, JDA proxy tool, we are going to use it and we are going to scan our target DNS, which is domain name service. And we are going to find the flaws or we are going to find the security vulnerabilities on the target application, which is currently live or which is running. So let's see the installation part, like how can we install, um, you know, the JDA pro proxy on uh, Ubuntu server and um, you know how can we do scan on targeted um, endpoint URL? In our case, we are going to scan one uh, website which is hosted on European Union. So, Get by Buzz is our uh, target website, and this is only for education purpose. Um, you know, other than this, we don't have any other intentions to do other activities with the endpoint URL. So, we're just going to scan the endpoint URL with the JD, prox JD proxy and we'll just find the vulnerabilities and leave, leave about it. So keep in mind, just for education purpose, uh, there, there is no any other intention. So I have installed Windows subsystem for Linux. So I'm using Linux on my Windows machine. So you can see that I have become a root user. And if you don't know how to become a root user, so I'm executing it. So once user, once you run the subsystem, so if you want to become a root user, usually we pass sudo hyphen s and you need to pass your password. So I'm going to pass my password. Now I became a root user. So I'm going to clear it and to install a JDO proxy. Uh, so JDO proxy is a dash -to scanner, which is dynamic application security scanner. So for installing purpose, you need to pass few commands, which is uh, you know one packaging manager command, and after that you need to pass the um, you know, tool name. So here, uh, in our case, we are going to call the snap. So snap is a packaging manager, and after that I'm passing the install and zda proxy and hyphen hyphen classic. So this is a command like, you know, you can use it and you can install Jitter Proxy in your system. So if I press enter, so Jitter Proxy do initiate and get it uh, installed in my laptop, which is on my uh, Linux machine. If you see here, so we have a Jitter Proxy 2.14.0 from Simmons minutes. So if you want to check the version, or, oh, it's directly showing over here, which is this is one has installed. And if you want to interact with your uh, UI, of JDA proxy, which on our case, uh, we are using the OWS AP ZAP, 
For that, you need to uh, initiate one command, which is a JDA proxy. If you press JDA proxy command, so once you click enter, what it will happen, it will create one UI. So in that, you can interact your UI and accordingly can do all the attacks, which means you can do scan of target environment or target server, sorry. So if you press enter, so my JDA proxy tool get initiated and it will open as a UI, which is user, user interface and wait for a second is initial leaf the first time it takes time to initiate okay now it is initiating if you see here is initiating the ui and i'm opening it as large more so for initial setup it may take some a uh, little more uh, time so it's based on your internet speed how internet good in your uh, you know place while you're installing this jda proxy so it got installed. So it is asking for do you want to persist the job session. So I didn't want to do that. That's why I'm just directly starting. No, I do not want to persist this session so at this moment. So I'm just pressing on start. If I press start, so I have all the UI. So it's saying welcome to Zap, and you can do automated and manual explore. And you do have a different bunch of um, sessions, and you have a modes, and you have different views commands. Uh, options and you can do analyzing reporting and you have different tools to use for jerry proxy and you can import it and you can export the files from uh, one place to another and you have a few online features with jerry proxy and all so yeah typically you can explore it while you are working with uh, in a real world the jerry proxy but this video we're good we're going to show you how we can use your live website and how we can use jerry proxy to find the vulnerabilities on running website or running uh, in a web application. So um, I'm going to show you an application uh, which is um, getbybus.com. So you know, this is the website. Um, this is a website and uh, usually this website used to book a ticket from one destination to another. And usually this website, I mean, <laughs> this company is available on Europe. So I didn't want to scan the application, which is, uh, you know, hosted on India. So, you know, it may be some violation or kind of thing. Initially, I thought to scan uh, other e-commerce website, but I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to get into risky. So that's why I'm scanning the website, which is not deployed into uh, India. So I'm uh, scanning this website, which is getbybuzz.com. So and since it is live you can see this you know i just refresh the web browser so you can see this uh, website is live and um, it is currently running so i would like to found the i would like to find the vulnerabilities or security flaws on this website so what i can do i just copy this um, you know url from this browser and i'll go to the um, jdo proxy so if you want to scan uh, any domain name service so you need to press an automated scanner and you need to specify what is your URL to get attack. So, you know, we're not going any attack. Just we are scanning the website and we are going to find uh, any security flaws. So use traditional spider. So spider is kind of a, uh, you know, um, you know, agent instead of JDA proxy. And you can use Ajax spider with that. If and you can, uh, you know, you can use what kind of browser you want. You want Chrome or you want Chrome headless. So how you want to attack this, um, uh, uh, attack this uh, attack on this particular URL. So in my case, I'm going to use a uh, Firefox headless. So once you select it, once you press on attack, so what this tool will do, it will go on scan the uh, website that we have specified over here, and it will show the results under this session. So how many uh, high and critical and medium and low vulnerabilities are present on this live website or live web application. So, you know, let's not waste time. So once I place on attack, so if you see this, the console will get open uh, for a fraction of seconds. So if you see this, so it is doing the attack, I mean, which is scanning the website and it is doing the HTTP methods, which is get and, you know, later it will go for post, put, delete. So it will scan all your website from all the HTTP methods and it will, uh, if you see this, like, you know, it is attacking on this particular getbybuzz.com and you can see all the information and if you see these alerts so you can see how many alerts are there and it is showing all the vulnerable informations and all so it's like it's cookies and the cookies without secure and it's absence of anti csrf token so these many of vulnerabilities are there so if you see here it is showing hey this is the url i'm scanning uh, which is get by and we have a risk of medium and 
um, you know, this is a source and this is a description. So it is going to give a description. So if you are a developer, if you want to scan your website on live, so you can look into this information and you can take the inputs from this website and accordingly you can take actions or fixing the issues in your website. So, and again, I'm reminding you, this is for education purpose only, not any other intentions to do activity. So if you see this, like, you know, you have uh, a number of vulnerabilities, a number of security flaw, flaws are there. So you can click on any one of the things. So it is uh, showing on over this, you know, in this console, which is low vulnerabilities. And we have the uh, medium vulnerabilities too. So accordingly, it is going to give a flag, which is blue and yellow. Are there any red? So if you see, we have a one red flag. So it is saying this is a high vulnerability. And this is the input it is showing on the script side. And this is the status code of HTTP. And later it is going to give us some session cookies and all. And it's showing the information about the attack. And if you come down over here, uh, you know, it is going to show the other information, just giving the solution. So what solution should you have to apply? Like, you know, check the response from the potential presence of uh, personally identifiable information. Ensure that nothing sensitive leaked by the application. Which means like, hey, there are some sensitive information has been getting leaked and you need to follow these all steps to get fixed. So, you know, this is how, you know, you can, can come over here and you can see the how much percentage is going to be uh, left and how much percentage has completed to uh, during the scanning. If you see this, like, you know, it is showing the um, get and we have a high vulnerability. And if it is green, so we don't have any vulnerabilities over here. So this is how, guys, like, you know, you can use, uh, you know, Zedia proxy to uh, scan your live website and you can find the vulnerabilities uh, during running because it is the best practice like you know you have and in the last video we had discussed about how we can use a SAS to scanning to scan the uh, source code and find the vulnerability so yeah we have fixed few vulnerabilities or you know we don't have any zero vulnerabilities from the code side but it's better and a good principle or a good practice to scan your website while it is running. So, so th then we can find the uh, puzzle ways it can be attacked by the hackers or any other resources. So what all what all possibilities we have to get hacked or what all possibilities we have flaws and how many system failures we have while running the application. So yeah, you know, um, you know, you can you can follow this application. You can you can target any application which is running accordingly you can scan the web the running application and you can found the security flaws and you know vulnerable disorder you can uh, do activity whatever you want so yeah you know uh, other than this like you know um, you know um, we have a number of uh, dash scanners are available in market a uh, few scanners are coming with the enterprises which is like which means you need to pay for it and you know uh, accordingly you can take the licenses and you can use it on real time but uh, this is a um the zd proxy is open source like you know you don't need to pay for it so as we've seen we have just you know fingertips uh, we have installed this application and you know we have interact with the application and we have targeted one uh lives uh, web application and we are uh, finding the vulnerabilities on it so you don't need to pay for it so it's uh, free of cost and fingertips you can install it and you can use it so as a promise like um, you know in our coming session we'll discuss or we'll implement the um, installing the uh, SAST and DAST and um, scanners into our um, uh, CSCD pipeline like uh, in this in this playlist we have described that DevSecOps so we need to integrate security at every corner and and that's our main agenda and uh, so that's all for this lecture and we have discussed about installation we have discussed about how can we target application and how can we um, find the vulnerabilities and security flaws and in the next section we'll discuss about how can we uh, scan a, a container and time images um, you know let's take example how can we scan a docker image how can we find the vulnerabilities and later we'll scan uh, kubernetes resources and after that, um, it will start one full amount of CSCD pipeline, which is writing the, which is writing pipeline as a code from the uh, bare hands, and will implement this entire scanners or integrate the scanners on pipeline level. And again, I'm mentioning the reason why I'm uh, you know showing everything on manual because I would like you to understand before going before going into manual. So 
once you have done your hand with the manual, so you already knew that, okay, this is the application is going to work on this, this type. So when you're going to manual, you know what you have to do and accordingly can take the automation steps to make it is enable on CSD pipeline. So um, that's all for this lecture and I hope you enjoy this session. And uh, like as usual, I am requesting you to subscribe my channel and share to your friends uh, who wants to pursue their career on security side and like this video and thank for watching. Stay tuned for this DevSecOps playlist. Bye-bye.